You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benny and Rowe and Mist Kinsman. But you've never seen an actual fish, but you'd seen fish fingers, you'd be horrified about what the image would be. Oh, hello, and welcome to Chewing the Cud, your weekly camp kaleidoscope of kitsch. I'm here with the ever interesting outfitted Mist. Hello, Mist. Interesting, stylish, fashionable. Fashion. No. No. Uh, anyway, I'm bringing you a story about a small town boy before we get all creatureful in crafty queens. Fox fisting again. And then we have a game that you can play along with too. But on screen now you can see our contact details. It's at the Could TV on social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always have a binge on YouTube. Just look for Chewing the Cud. And as the names of people who have reached out and touched our souls go along the bottom of the screen, Mike gets ready to bring us up to date on things you may have missed from the news in The Buzz. Tastes weird, that coffee. You spat in mine. You drank from mine? <laughs> oh, I put coffee down and was like, oh, that must be mine. It was on the right table. in front of me. Oh, anyway, you don't go on holidays, do you? I don't get the chance to. I'm too busy doing filmy TV things in my spare time now. Making believe that you're being chased by a dinosaur. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What's well, the story about a, a lady called Ra Ra Armstrong? Ra Ra Armstrong. Yeah. Wow. What? That's Mr. A... Kinsman. <laughs> <laughs> Ra Ra's a weird name. <laughs> I was saying wow, as in that's cracking, not as in wow, that's weird. Rara's a great name. Mm -hmm. She's named after a skirt. Um, she's 39. Mm -hmm. She's from, from the UK. Mm -hmm. okay? But she was a, appalled, aghast and disgusted about what happened in her hotel room in Benidorm. Oh, well, there's been many a horrible, dodgy thing that's happened in the hotel room in she's Benidorm. with her 11-year-old son. Okay. okay. Um, and then she had a camera set up in her bedroom. Because she is an OnlyFans creator. Um, and witnessed a man from the reception going through her lo dirty laundry and stealing a thong after giving it a good old sniff. You're pursing your lips and thinking. <laughs> was it you? No, it was not me, because I would not be going after an OnlyFans lady. I have stayed in a few hotels where um, I've... Popped, popped on my grinder, because I don't really use grinder, but if I'm travelling, I do. And and often... <laughs> it's fed up with the rejection where he lives, that's why he doesn't use it that much. Basically, that's, that's absolutely the case. The only person who lives in a city centre that opens up a grid to zero people near him. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much true. Um, so when I travel, mm -hmm. I, I do sometimes use grinder. Well, I've got rid of it now, but I used to use it. And, uh, yeah, many a time the uh, hotel staff would appear on there and uh, offer a few little extra sh uh, services, shall we say. You're paying for it now, aren't you? No, I'm not paying for it. No shame if you were, just saying you were. Um, I'm too poor. Yeah, that's a bit more like <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, so she was upset by this and then slightly more upset when she looked and said, hang on a minute, he pays for my content as well. So he subscribes to her content, realised that he, she was staying in the hotel, found out her room, Broke up, stole some panties, gave it a sniff, ran away. Oh, that's just cheeky. It's borderline stalking. It well, it's it's theft at the very, very least. Mm -hmm. I do I, I I understand the appeal. <laughs> <laughs> but crime is crime. You understand the appeal of sneaking into someone's room when they're out and stealing their underwear? No. I I, I understand the appeal of <laughs> Someone was breaking into someone's room to sniff their dirty underwear. No, no, not that bit. Not that bit. Being an OnlyFans model. No, the o odour of, of, of undies. Okay, moving on. Um, how do you feel about Capri Suns? <laughs> That's a bit of a change of speed, isn't normally, it? <laughs> normally, I have a bit of a lead-in, you know, a bit of a story, a bit of a preamble behind it, but just wanted to move away from mist sniffing knickers as much as oh, possible. Oh, don't call them knickers. Pants. Boxers. Jocks. Don't call them knickers. Oh, the, the, worst, the worst word in the world is panties. I hate panties. the word panties. It's horrible. Okay. Oh, Capri Sun. Capri Sun. Capri Sun. How do you feel about Capri Sun? 
<laughs> Better than I do about panties. No, um, Capri Sun. Uh, it's something you stick in a kid's lunch box, isn't it? Capri Suns, they're, they're one of my um, go-to hangovers mm. moments. Mm. So a bag of spinach and a couple of Capri Suns will sort you right out. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the internet is all concerned because they have announced that Capri Sun pouches... Why, 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 why are we being... Capri Sun bottles. Capri... Capri Sun... <laughs> what... Why, why is this the mime for Capra Sun? <laughs> no, it's moving from an existing... Okay. ...into a bottle. Isn't that a bit of a backwards step, recycling-wise? No, because Capra Sun pouches are horrific for the environment. Oh, are they? <laughs> because they're layered plastics. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Um, so, kind of takes away their kind of, like, unique... The USB. Product. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, what they have said is that they're not going to replace the pouches completely. Okay, they're going to phase in the bottles, mm -hmm. right, and give people a choice between the pouch and the bottle. And are they going to explain this one's better for the environment, this one's horrible? No, they're just, just doing it. Um, it also, because the production cost of a Capri Sun in the pouch is really difficult. Oh, so there's some money savings. Well. Also, have, to have special machinery involved. And... It's funny how people do green things when it's actually cheaper. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Set to launch in next year, so 2025, you'll start to see Capri Sun in bottles. Okay. Now, they already do the, cap the, the um, cordial in bottles, so you can dilute your own Capri Sun. But I can't do it. I can never get it to taste like Capri Sun. You've not got the ratio right. No, even I follow the ratio as I can on the thing, and it just doesn't taste the same. I think it's because it's not in a pouch. I do... <laughs> There are certain drinks I can drink in glass and certain drinks I can drink in a mug and certain drink... It, like, there is something about that to it. I know technically there's different, like, brandy glasses and aerating the thing and all that kind of stuff, but I wouldn't have imagined it was that different for a cordial and a Yeah, and well, a Coke's couch. different. Yeah, but that's because they put cherry in it and... No, if you have it in different... So if you drink Coke out of a glass yeah. or out of a mug, yeah, it tastes yeah, different, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, it does, it does. Wine out of a bag tastes different. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and if you taste different in or out of a bag, why not share that with us? We are at The Good TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now, you referenced your love life before, or lack thereof. Yeah, the non-existent. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to pre-warn you that this may impact your current love situation as well, okay? As a fungus has been found to be killing off banana groves. And we know that you refuse to pay for vibrators and dildos, so... Oh, it's, it's a snack and a pleasure. It's got that curve that he likes, right? Um, so, yeah, a fungus called TR4 has been found to be ravaging um, banana groves all over the world. Um, and they've given the banana 10 years before it becomes extinct. No! Yeah. This uh, fungus has been running rampant for years and it's getting worse and worse and worse because of climate change. Everything's getting warmer. It's easy for this fungus to grow and spread. And people say it's spreading like wildfire. Okay? We can't lose a banana. Now, the banana as it is, we are more than likely going to lose. However, scientists in Australia have found a strain of banana that isn't susceptible to this fungus. So okay. as long as it doesn't mutate, we're okay. But those bananas are not very curved. They're quite straight. Well, was it back before Brexit days, there was the big, oh, we want our curvy bananas. Why is the EU making them straight? Blah, 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 blah. It's like a it big argument. Around. Say again? It was the other way around. There had to be a certain curve to a banana for it to be a banana. Well, that whole ridiculous argument. So mm -hmm. I don't really care, as long as, as they taste good. After you've used it as a sexual lady, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, the things I care about with a banana are flavour, girth and length. Everybody else just cares about flavour. Why is a dildo? Do I have a wish you got an account? I've heard actually. If you if if you don't, you how it's got a natural can pop opening for for a banana. I've heard if you bite it at the other end and peel it from that it's supposed side, to eat it from, so that and that, that's the bottom of the banana. yeah yeah yeah. That's so if you bite of it off there, apparently you don't all need those to bite it. all those stringy bits don't appear when you yeah. peel it. Because you're opening, you just actually pinch it and it opens up naturally. Yeah, I've not, I've not tried it, but that's apparently that's eat. the case. Yeah, that's how monkeys eat bananas. It's how I eat bananas. How the rest of the world eats bananas. It's just you that eats them wrong. But yeah. I'm a failure as ever, apparently. Hey, 
self-admitting. It's the first step. Um, but that's all from the buzz this week. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> nice to have my self-esteem really, really built up there. Really, really, really many thanks. Mm. Well, you're welcome, Mist. Stay there. As coming up after this short break, we're going to get all up to date with the celebrity news in showbiz. Welcome back, and you're watching Chewing the Cud. This is the part of the show where we look into the what's, who's, and who's what's of the world of celebrity, and it's missed in the showbiz. So, celebrity rat bag JK Rowling. We've got some more news about her. Not rat bag. Why not? <laughs> Well, if you want to be technical, she's very, very precious about uh, who has them and, and, and who, sh who deserves them and, and where they should and be. she just is one. And she just is one. Yeah, that's probably why she cares so much. Well, she has been doing her usual spreading of ill-informed and offensive information about trans people. Hate. Yeah. Vitriolic hate. Basically. And we all know that uh, she is now currently a little bit quieter at the moment because of uh, a little bit of a cyberbullying lawsuit that might be coming out thanks to boxer Imane Khalif, if I'm pronouncing that properly, apologies if not, um, because of some of the horrible things she said about her during the uh, Olympics. Olympics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her and Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Uh, Elon Musk. <laughs> Well, so Lusk, Lusk, about this who's deluded. <laughs> if he can't get somebody's gender right, why should I get his name right? Another Exactly. Um, so both both of those are up thing thing. Well, one of the things that they usually cite with all of these things about the science thing, and there is only two genders, etc. All bollocks, of mm -hmm. course. Well, a, where, a very prominent urologist and gender affirming um, surgeon, uh, Mr. James Bellringer, mm -hmm. has come out with some very frank words for our Miss Rowling. Um, he has said that she should not comment on this stuff because she doesn't know much about it. Uh, it seems slightly unfair for her to use her privileged position to make what he considers some ill-informed comment about this patient group. Basically, she should stick out of what he does and comment on stuff that she does, and not comment on stuff that she doesn't know much about. Mm -hmm. I, I actually read that whole whole tirade that he gave mm. beautifully put and he basically said I don't write about wizards yep it's like I'm not an author don't write children's books shut up yeah which I absolutely loved it all comes uh, following a, a rather good video that you should be able to find on uh, YouTube if you want to look him up uh, where he talks about surgery and the, uh, the transition and, and all everything that goes on with the bottom bit when uh -huh. uh, wanting to go through reaffirming surgery and the big thing was was what a change it made on the people who've gone through it to mm -hmm. uh, have that affirmation because um, it, it wasn't a solid statistic, but from his wealth of experience um, that you could easily expect at least one in five to commit suicide if they don't have that surgery and don't go through those steps because living in the wrong body is such an impactful and horrible thing. Mm -hmm. And just why would you make their lives worse? No, so I've, I've got a, a trans friend, trans masculine, who's got their, their bottom surgery planned, the top surgery happened, and there was almost an overnight change of this person into a more confident, outgoing person. And as we're getting closer to the bottom surgery, they're becoming more and more holy themselves mm -hmm. and experiencing their life and living it authentically. And it's a privilege to be part of that journey, even though it's not my journey. So JK Rowling can shut the f*** up. Yep. And now we have that from a proper, proper science pod. And um, that guy as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, do you remember a rather good tune? I, I, I think it's... 21st it's night of September. No. Aye, aye. <laughs> No, a really good old tune, which I, I think is as fresh today as, as it was when it was released. Small Town Boy. When was that released? It was released, I can tell you, 25th of May, 1984. I was one. <laughs> yeah, way before I was born. Um, so it has had a bit of a fresh 1984, update. 1984, not 1884. Shh. Uh, it has had a fresh update by these guys, Perfume Genius and Knox. They've okay. released this reimagined version of it, and I've, I've given it a listen. 
and they've done a really good job of it. What they basically wanted to do is keep it really close to the original, but just give it a little bit more of a modern dance feel and give it that pop touch. Has it still got the electric keyboard? Yeah. Honestly, it, it's it's such a it's a subtle upbeat. Mm -hmm. It is. It, you can tell it's it's there. They've done a really good job. It does bring it fresh up to date. I think the original stands out really well. But I've heard so many different remixes with it in because it's just such a good song. But they've done a really really nice. Did, job did you get up? No. Such a good it song. really is one of my favourites of all time. It's it's absolutely in there. It, it's 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 part of our culture. It's part of our generation. It's it's Your just generation. It's it's beautiful, but having it freshened up and updated rather than just mashed and mixed again, mm -hmm. um, they've done, just done a really beautiful job of it. So just just for peeps at home, people on that side, that's Bronsky beat, right? That's Bronsky beat, and that's the new new fella. Yeah, the Knox. Quite pronounced. <laughs> okay. Well, Jimmy Somerville themselves have said of this version. It's a beautiful echo coming back and travelling after a long and eventful distance. Ah. So even Jimmy Somerville should know probably. <laughs> probably yeah. It's a beautiful echo after a long journey and travelling a distance. Get your <laughs> out. <laughs> well, the other thing about it as well is because it's 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 that story of a boy from a small town and uh, everything they have to deal with and why you'd come to a big city where you can feel more comfortable being gay. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that they reflected on with doing this update is is that's still something now. Yeah, and I think I think now it's not just about being gay, it's about anybody from the LGBTQIA plus community has that experience. You come from a small town into the big city and that sense of anonymity mm -hmm. helps with helping you discover who you are, which I think is a really important message. So yeah. Moving on to some other news uh, in the showbiz world. Um, a little bit um, behind the times, this one is maybe not as contemporary as, as I normally do in these segments. It's possibly... It's about a rehash of an 80s song. It's 40 years old. Yeah, but it's, it's only... The rehash has just come out. Uh -huh. um, this is some 183-year-old news. OK. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Your diary. We're, we're nothing but uh, contemporary. Um, anyway, it's actually because a new documentary's come out. It's directed by Sean Peterson and features interviews with scholars and historians and offers some never-before-seen photos and letters all about the 16th US president, Abraham Lincoln. OK. So he's mainly regarded as the greatest president of all time um, in that thing. Mm. It's certainly better than the current wash. When you think Abraham Lincoln compared to Trump. But was he that great or were he just revisionist history? In it? Well, maybe. He's mainly known for um, being president during the Civil War through mm. 1861 to 1865, te um, apparently ending slavery in the US, though, uh, yeah, there's yeah, some debate about that. The get didn't end slavery. It, it's attributed to him and has been attributed during to him to a lot. Term, it yeah. ended. Or it started to end anyway. Yeah. The, we can go into the details. This is not the details we're after. There's more details. Okay. So he's also very well known for the Gettysburg Address, which mm -hmm. is considered like a really one of the best speeches of all time. Um, and he was assassinated in the theatre. Shot uh, on the 14th of April 1865, just weeks before being sworn in for his second term. Mm -hmm. But didn't die in the theatre. Died much later. But the incident happened. Yeah, he was shot and then waited. Not like JFK. JFK had the good grace to die in the car. Pedantic, pedantic, pedantic. Anyway, he was married to Mary Todd. They had four sons. And he was widely regarded as having periods of depression even when he was in the White House. Okay. But that's, that's all stuff we know. Okay. What this documentary reveals is that about 20 years before he was the Republican and, uh, elected president, mm -hmm. uh, Lincoln was an attorney in Illinois where he and a businessman called Joshua Speed were believed to be in a relationship. Okay. Um, he, Speed was uh, somebody who co-owned a general store and they apparently shared a bed for four years. And when they split up, Lincoln apparently fell into a period of his darkest depression. Okay. 
it's it's pretty bad for what they for what's rumored to be in these notices. They basically, found out from a local paper that Speed was selling his store and going off to mm-hmm. his family home to look after his parents who were getting old. But back to Kentucky to look after his mother's farm. Um, but after this, his friends had to put him on suicide watch because he was that depressed. They have to remove his razor kit and any other sharp object, objects in the house. Okay. And uh, he even wrote to his law partner saying, I am the most miserable of men. Okay. Like, proper it, drama queen. Could it just proper have been... Proper drama queen. Could it just have been someone with a really close friendship? They slept together. Did it say that one was the top, one was the bottom, and they're at it like rabbits? They, were sp- they spent four years being really cosy. It is all... To be fair... I've had, I've had friends stay over, we've cuddled all night, and nothing sexual's happened because it's just nice to cuddle a mate now and again. Four years? Four years... Anyway, oh, I, to well, be fair, I'm not to be fair to you, not, but I'm to also be fair to you, it is all alleged. There's nothing that confirms it. It is all, all, but there's lots and lots of it, and to have that level of emotional reaction to it, okay. um, it is suggested. We can't say confirmed. To be fair, but it is suggested that he might have been a bit of a wafter. Might have been bisexual. Might have been pansexual. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there was definitely a strong, loving, fraternal relationship. He may have been asexual. From what they were saying, there's lots of evidence here. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a light-hearted yeah. review in a few minutes. Read the f***ing book if you like. Or watch the documentary, rather. They are suggesting that it's quite a strong romantic relationship. And okay. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, OK. And that's all for the showbiz this week. Well, thanks for that, Mist. Always nice to know that we could think that someone may or may not have been gay over 100 years ago. But coming up next, we have a game to play in our Game of the Week. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud with me, Mike Benning Rowe, and him, Miss Kinsman. Now, it's that part of the show where we get to play a little game. And this is for our own very much... I'm not going to say it because that's rude. Off you, Pop. I can see what it says on the thing, you know. <clears throat> game of the Week. In a game of riddles, we twist and we turn. With questions so tricky, your brain will burn. But with laughter and fun, you'll solve the clues. In this riddle game, it's me versus you. Are you ready, Mike? I am indeed ready. I add five to nine and get two. The answer is correct. So what am I? Five to nine. The answer is two. A bad Dolly Parton lyric? Go on. Five to eight. No. The answer is a clock. When it's 9am, add five hours, it would make it 2pm. Wasn't far off. We'll go on for another one. Yeah. Rachel goes to the supermarket and buys ten tomatoes. Unfortunately, on her way back home, all but nine get ruined. How many tomatoes are left in a good condition? Do that again. <laughs> the answer there. Uh, Rachel goes to the su- supermarket and buys ten tomatoes. Unfortunately, on the way back home, all but nine get ruined. How many tarp tomatoes are left in a good condition? Nine. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a difficult riddle, that one, to be fair. I have questions. What did she do to these tomatoes to ruin them? Well, a tomato. OK, what did she do to a tomato to ruin them? Um, well, it's something on the way back home. She probably saw somebody in, in, a, in a stock having done something very naughty in the village and decided to throw one at them. Moving on. What is... Tend to be young and you meant referencing stocks as a, a form of corporal punishment. <laughs> I had a very difficult upbringing. What is three-sevenths chicken, two-thirds cat and two-fourths goat? 
Ooh, you quick off that one. The reason why no one goes round to your house for food, mist. <laughs> I'm quite a good cook. I'm not a very good cook for myself, but when I get the chance to cook a big meal, I can, I, I can go to town. Very, very good at a roast. Or at least I think so. Anyway. You're putting stuff in an oven and waiting. There's an art form to it. I'm not coming to yours to dinner if that's how you think it's done. Anyway, what is three sevenths chicken, two thirds cat, and two fourths goat? I can give you a clue if you like. Go on then, give us me a clue. An American city. Mississippi. Mississippi. I'm afraid we can't accept the answer. You didn't buzz for it. No. Um, no, the answer is Chicago. Because of the pizzas, because of the microwave pizzas, because of the microwave pizzas, missed. Three letters from the word chicken, chick. Two letters from the word cat, cat. <laughs> and uh, two letters from the word goat. Oh, Chicago. But the, it's but much Chicago's easier if you got, can see it written down. It's got that two one. C's in it, so it's got three from cat. Two thirds, so two out of the three are in it. Three sevenths out of the word chicken. It's much easier if you can see it written down, to be honest, to be fair to you. The next one then. <laughs> this one's a visual clip. What does this picture look like? <sighs> if a zookeeper had a hundred pairs of animals in their zoo and two pairs of babies are born for each of one of the original animals, then sadly, 23 animals don't survive. How many animals do you have left in total? Go on. We have a, an interesting conversation with the, the zookeeper. <laughs> That's what we have there. Animals die. There's, there's no suggestion of negligence. Start the riddle again. If a zookeeper uh -huh. had 100 pairs of animals in yeah. their zoo, uh -huh and two pairs of babies are born for each one of the original animals. Then, very, very, very sadly... Before when... that, the question should have happened. You've got all these animals suddenly dropping kids off in one zookeeper. Very, very good fertility plan in this zoo. Very good mm -hmm. fertility plan. Just not very good aftercare. <laughs> um, anyway. Veal is delicious, though. A hundred pairs of animals in their zoo, two pairs of babies born for each of the original animals, then, sadly, 23 animals don't survive. How many animals do you have left in total? Well, it's 500 minus 23. I don't know. I'm not the one being posed the questions. Well, 77. 477. 977. What? So 100 times 2 equals 200. 100 pairs of animals, yeah, that's what I got. 200 plus 800, 1,000. 1,000 minus 23, yep, you got it. So, next question. I saw my math teacher with a piece of graph paper yesterday. Whatever your next thing is going to, just don't say it. <laughs> your math teacher will be well dead. <laughs> I saw my math teacher with a piece of graph paper yesterday. What were they up to? Go on. Buggering the bursa. <laughs> no. <laughs> that might be a bit more funny than the actual line. Funny. Uh, the answer being, I think they must have been plotting something. Yeah, I didn't write these. Please don't blame me. <laughs> Time for the next one? Mm -hmm. OK. If you multiply this number by any other number, the answer will always be the same. What is this? Zero. Bingo. No, zero, not bingo. Bingo is a game. <laughs> no, I mean, you got the answer yeah, right. Well done. Well, 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 well done. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Yeah, round of applause, please. Round of applause from the gallery. Right, OK. I am an odd number. Person. The word is person. I'm perfectly normal, thank you very much. Of course you are. 
Mm. I am an odd number. Take away a letter and I become even. What number am I? Go on. 11. No. Take away a letter. 11. Nope. Go on. 11. Still not right. The answer is 7. Go on. 11. No. That would have to take away two letters. Go on. 11. <sighs> what three numbers give the same result when... 169. Always a happy ending. Some people are rather juvenile. <laughs> what three numbers give the same result when multiplied and added together? Go on. Zero. No. Three different numbers. Multiplied and added together mm -hmm. gives the same result. Yep. Zero point one, one point zero, no minus zero point one, and zero. Ooh, you're getting a bit too fancy, but it's true. One, two, and three. One plus two plus three equals six. And Another one. way you had to stop and think about <laughs> it. Oh, yeah. I, is it? Hang on a is minute. It? Is it? One little finger, <laughs> then two, that's three, and then one, two, three, and that's it. Oh, it's six, it is six. That's exactly what, what happened. That's exactly the process my brain just went through. I'm not yeah. even gonna lie. <laughs> that, yeah, that is exactly what happened. And one times two times three equals six as well. I'd less of a problem with that one. It's the adding that was a difficult thing. Anyway. Okay, that's enough of that now, because coming up after this short break, Miss brings us a look into the more creative side of his mind, sadly, in Crafty Queens. Welcome back, and you're still watching Mike and Mist and Chewing the Cud. Now it's time to do something that Mist once referred to as his personal, well, I'm not going to say that word, it's Mist and Crafty Queens. Right, Mike, I've got a, a lovely array of things for you, starting with a humble toilet tube. Okay. You have that one in front of you? I have a, I have a toilet tube. Yeah. Lovely. So what we're going to be making today is a pen holder. Oh. Yeah. But we're going to, because this is Crafty Queens, we can't just make a pen holder. We're going to make something beautified and, and wonderful. We're going to make an animal pet holder. Yay. <laughs> so. First of all, you'll see that I've cut out a little template for you. For those at home, this is what it looks like. You'll want to create a shape like this. But uh, I've made these earlier so we could save some time rather than cutting them out. And what you're going to put... Yeah. It's nothing rude. It's not some strange Zen symbol. Uh, these are what are going to be feet. Okay. So what I want you to do is just uh, take those little tabs and mm -hmm. fold those up. Okay. There we go. And if you take your little toilet tube and place that in the center circle, affix that with some little tape so they all stick together. This doesn't work, doesn't it? That tab's way away. Make it fit. They were very, very we were elegant and skillfully drawn earlier on. Are you drunk? <laughs> I, I might have been disturbed by somebody who was spitting in my coffee. Uh, but yes, if you fold your tabs up and bring them around there, it doesn't have to look perfect because we are going to cover these up. Okay. But we just want to make sure that that's secure to the base. Okay. All good. Using this tape. Using that tape. Using this double-sided tape as normal tape. Just using this as normal tape, yes. The double-sided element will come in in just a moment. 
Okay, well these pieces overlap, so I hope that it's not too tricky. It won't be too tricky, no. Should have something looking a little bit like a cock and balls. How are you doing? Yep, there you go. Reminds me of an X. Right, now you'll want to take any of your coloured pieces. Now we're going to make some They're not imaginary. <laughs> You're going to take. You're going to want to be making any kind of animal you like. This is going to be their base. So okay. you've got lots of pieces of card next to you. Uh -huh. Be selective with your colours depending on what kind of animal you want to make. I'm okay. going to start with an orange base. Okay. And you want to wrap that around your toilet tube, covering up the pieces of tape you had earlier. Okay. And that's so you know where your double-sided tape is. This is this, is this is bigger than the tube, right? It is bigger than the tube. Yes. It's supposed to be right. Sorry? And it's supposed to be, yeah? Yes. Okay. Never trust me, this one. Never trust me. Hmm? I put a lot of effort in preparing for this. There you, you never trust me. You want to lay some of your double-sided tape along the edge and then seal that around your toilet tube. Do -do 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 -do. So I'm, I'm wrapping paper around a tube. Yes. Okay. And if you need a little more tape, <laughs> as I do. No, because I'm using glue. You're using glue. Well, you're a rebel, aren't you? Rebel without a clue. <laughs> but lots of thought and effort here. This has been thoroughly researched and prepared for, I'll have you know. What animal am I making? Whatever animal you like. I'm giving you artistic free expression. Okay, so I, I have now got a, a, a yellow tube. You now have a yellow tube. Now that little excess that's a little bit taller than the uh, the thing. Uh-huh. You want to make a few little incisions on along the top. Okay. And then tuck it in. I couldn't have just done, like, cut it off at the top. You could have done, but this makes it a little bit more secure for the pens. He says as if he's not just making that up off the top of his head. Because you've also given me bloody bandage scissors for some reason. They were the only other spare pair I had, and I wanted the best ones for myself. What? <laughs> There's tons of scissors in that jar. Well, not what I saw. When did you last have your eyes tested? Can you see these glasses? And how dirty they are. <laughs> Now, you've got lots and lots of other pieces of paper and lots of other beautifying little things like little gems and little eyeballs. Okay. Go to town. You want to think about furry bellies and uh, fluffy cheeks and uh, pointy ears. Do I? Yeah. Is that not just your fetish wish list? Uh, I've never really been into furries, to be honest. While I do this, uh, we had uh, a friend of yours on Zoe the other day. Okay. Um, who came on to talk, you know, to, to fill in and talk about things and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got to talking about somebody at Pride. Ooh, okay. okay. Um, and how they're claiming that they bought bodybuilding wear <laughs> from a fetish shop. <laughs> um, um, what... What, 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 what might this rumour be? Apparently, they spent nearly a hundred pounds on bodybuilding clothes. <laughs> that's quite clearly fetish wear. Uh, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You spent, because I know which stall you were at. How, how would you know that? What stall you were at? Mm. Because I'm not ashamed to say I looked at the fetish wear. <laughs> right. I purchased some fetish wear, right? And the gentle, the, the tall bodybuilding guy is a, a, a adult film star called Amadeus. Oh yes, yes. yes. Uh, he he's a very handsome chap, it's, it's, and he's a sweetheart too. He's got a beautiful bulldog as well. I've never actually spoken with them because you're probably too busy going hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, uh, can I buy this, please? Oh, <laughs> that dear. may or may not have been what exactly what happened. Yeah. Because you can't talk to human beings like the human beings. No. Um, <laughs> um, and is there any more to this story, or is it just, just completely unsubstantiated rumour? 
Did or did you not spend £90 on fetish wear and tried to claim it was gym wear? No, I didn't. How much did you spend? About £65. Pounds. <laughs> on a top. It was a top, a thong and a, a pair of shorts. All of which are very much um, in the range of clothes I aspire to fit into. And I have no problem with aspirational clothing in any way, shape or form. But don't say it's for the gym when it's clearly for a wank. <laughs> the shorts would pass. I didn't buy the ones with the assless cheeks. And we're all thankful for that, man. <laughs> very thankful. <laughs> But yes, I did walk past that very many times because <coughs> they did have some very, very beautiful men modelling the clothing and looking the, the way I would love to have ever looked. And the, the, the great guys too, and they're very friendly and very open yeah. and very honest and, and non-judgmental. How is your um, animal going? I'm almost finished. Oh, very good you. Well, I can talk about people find attractive without stopping and staring at something else. <laughs> um, Wistfully into the distance. I'm getting glue everywhere. I am done. Ooh, okay. Well, give me one moment and I will be with you. I obviously take uh, more time over these things. <laughs> Slow. I believe that was on one of your school reports as well, wasn't it, Miss? Oh, you are absolutely rotten to me. Yeah, didn't say no. I do not deserve the abuse. We keep coming back for more. <laughs> okay, right, there we go. I am done with mine as well. And just to finish this it is off, I will put in some pens. So, there we go. Nice little animal pen holder. Isn't that pretty? Oh, you did a duck. No, I did a chick. Oh, a chick. Okay. That, that, that counts. We'll, 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 we'll go with that. Yeah. There we go. Now remember, if you can't get any peen or any vagine or anything in between, be a crafty queen. <sighs> so pen holder. Yeah, so you just pop your pens in that. It sits and lives on your desk because it's a work of beauty and a work of art. It'll just cheer you up through the day when you're having a very horrible time in the office. And whenever you need a pen, just take it out. And when I've got people done. coming into the office to meet me, it's like I'm coming to my office and we're going, great. So um, we're talking about what, what we've got planned for the next year. Oh, did your kids make that? No. A 48-year-old man made that called Mist. I'm not 48, you cheeky bugger. I'm far, far younger. And yes, it, it's... Not seen photo ID, we're not believing the lies. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful work of art. Okay. Oh, well, that's almost the end of the show. But for now on screen, you can see our contact details. It's at the Cud TV on your social media. And if you want to catch up with any previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Just look for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching. I apologize. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.